welcome to class. For today, we're gonna to be working into the hips, focusing a little bit more on alignment, so you may notice that cues are going to be focused more into that space on squaring off the hips, stacking the hips, different things like that, um, but still working into that space nonetheless um, in some familiar feel-good poses. No props are required for today's flow, so whenever you have your space to practice in, go ahead and meet me right away in Downward Facing Dog. And when coming into this shape right away, just allow it to feel good. Don't overthink it. Whether you want to find a nice, long, deep stretch right away or you want to find movement, make it your own. It's more of an active start to today's class. So just do whatever comes naturally, whatever feels good. We're only just gonna be here for a few breaths. So we'll use that as an opportunity to create space, a little bit of activation, waking the body up. And finding your breath, tuning in, showing up. And four more breaths or so. Lifting the hips high up towards the sky, finding that hinge, bringing the hip points to the tops of the thighs as you reach the sit bones higher towards the sky above you. Knowing that that space is going to be where we're focusing today, but of course working out any other kinks that exist as you arrive onto your mat today. One more deep inhale in. Exhale, settle. Go ahead, nice and slow, drop the knees down towards the earth. Hips come to the heels, untucking the toes. And then right away, go ahead, find the fingertips beyond the toes back behind you, and then scoop the tailbone underneath you, lifting the hip points towards the sky. Squeezing the glutes nice and slow and rolling the shoulders away from one another as you pop the chest and heart up towards the sky. Open up through the front of the hips. Grounding down through the shins, the tops of the feet. Gaze up. Exhale, lower nice and slow. Come back up, right. Right fingertips plant once more. We're going to find a few rounds of circle camel. So as the right fingertips plant, left arm sweeps across the body and up overhead as you press the hip points towards the top of the mat, opening through the front of the hips, scooping that tailbone underneath you once more, and then exhale. Hips come down, left fingertips beyond the left toes, right arm sweeps across and up and overhead as the, right, as the hip points come forward. Find a little bit more length in the front body as you scoop that tailbone underneath you. Exhale, lower. Hips come down towards the heels, trying to make that lower happen at the same time to the best of your ability. One more round each side, fingertips plant, scoop the hips up and forward. Left arm sweeps up and overhead. Exhale, lower, nice and slow. Once those hip points, sit point, sit bones land, left fingertips come beyond the left toes, right arm sweeps up front and overhead, open up. Exhale, lower. And then bring your hands to heart center. Find your breath. Maybe close your eyes. Take an opportunity to set an intention or just have a moment of gratitude. And then go ahead and drive down through the tops of the feet, through the shins. Lift those hips up, stacking the hips over the heels over the knees, coming into a tall kneeling position. And then take this opportunity to bring your hands, your finger point, your fingers to the points of your hips. And from this space, find a gentle scoop of the tailbone once more, lifting those hip points up and in towards your ribs, lifting the belly button, engaging the core. And exhale, release. Let the tailbone reach back, maybe that belly falls. And exhale. Can't do that incorrectly, but exhale, draw everything up and in. Find that engagement. 
Lifting those hip points up. Inhale, release. Let everything soften. Maybe find that little exaggeration, a little arch to the low back. And then exhale, draw everything up and in, lifting those hip points up and in towards the ribs. Belly button lifts, low belly lifts. Inhale, release it. Exhale, lift it up and in. Feel the core engage nice and slow. Don't hold your breath when you get to this space. You should be able to find your breath with this engagement, with this hold here. So go ahead and find that now. Keeping that tuck of the tailbone underneath you, that lift of the low belly. You're nice and stacked, hips over knees. And from here, we're gonna find a hinge of the hip. So inhale, arms up overhead. And on the exhale, let your arms sweep down alongside your body as you reach the sit bones back behind you, folding the chest over the knees. Like you're coming into a, like a skier's lunge or a skier's squat, but your shins are obviously down, so you're not uplifted on your feet. But the upper body, the torso, is working in that same space. So the arms are reaching back behind you, you're hinging at the hips, you're reaching your chest forward as your sit bones reach back behind you. Inhale, arms sweep down and up overhead. Exhale, find that hinge. Like you're in an accordion folding all the way over yourself. So the, hamstr the backs of your legs are coming closer to the calves, the chest is coming closer to the thighs as you sandwich your body in towards one another. Inhale, lift. And as you lift up, you're driving those hip points forward by squeezing your glutes back behind you. Exhale, low. Finding that hinge, staying lifted in the low belly. And those sit bones are reaching equally back behind you. Like if you were going to touch the sit bones towards your heels, they would touch at the exact same time. Inhale, lift. Lift and squeeze. One more round, exhale. Inhale, lift. And on this next hip, exhale, find that hinge once more, really reaching back through the hips. Like someone had a rope across the front of your hips and they're pulling it back behind you. Try to really find that crease, find that hinge. And then let everything soften coming into embryo pose. Chest falls heavy onto the thighs, forehead comes onto the mat. Arms wrap around your lower body as they fall heavy. Finding this more closed off shape, come back into your breath. And then go ahead and bring your fingertips towards the top of the mat, coming into child's pose for just a brief moment. And drop the forearms, gaze forward, snake and pull the body up and through to the top of the mat, coming into high cobra or upward facing dog, open the front of the hips. If you come into more, if you come into a more active shape, if you come into upward facing dog, you're finding a little bit more energy within the legs to allow the hips to fall a little bit heavier. Rolling the inner thighs down and away. Finding engagement in the glutes to pull the hips down and forward. Finding that swooping motion to find the lift, a nice opening. Chest is lifted, engage through the arms to give yourself that space for the hips to hang heavy. And then drop the knees, tuck the toes, bring your hips up and back down, we're facing down. Few breaths here in your shape.
Feel free to find stiff stillness and find that engagement, that lift of the hips, that hinge of the front body, that engagement within the back line of the legs. On your next inhale, right leg lifts high and back behind you. Exhale, soft bend of the left knee as the right knee drives forward. Bring that foot outside the hand once it plants. Go ahead and rock back and forth for just a moment or so. Giving yourself the opportunity to bring that left hip point down and bringing that right sit bone back behind you. So you're pulling that right hip back. You're bringing that left hip point forward, squaring everything off. Keeping that right knee hugged in. Low belly stays engaged, stays supportive here in the shape. Chest remains lifted. And I know I did say no props for today, but you can always, if you like to have props in your flows, you can always throw some blocks underneath your hands to get a little bit more lift, make this squaring of the hips a little bit more accessible. And go ahead and drop the back knee. And find a new lift here of the hip points, keeping the chest nice and lifted. Still working through that space of bringing the right hip back, keeping that right leg hugging in towards that right arm. And then lift the back knee up, find that low lunge for a pause, and then send the hips back in space, coming into pyramid pose. When transitioning into this shape, sometimes that left hip will want to trail back in space a little bit more. So go ahead and let that left hip curl in, come down, square back off. Feeling the inner line of the thighs zip toward one another. And then go ahead and bend that right knee. Take a step or two to bring the left foot outside the left hand. Inhale, sit the hips low, come into an active squat, drive those knees nice and wide, sit those hips low. Low belly is lifted, chest is lifted, arms are out forward, shoulder blades are down the back body. Feel the lower body engage. And then on the exhale, keep that hinge of the hips best you can, straighten the legs and start to dive the chest, the heart forward. Reaching the hips back behind you. Bring the fingertips down towards the earth, finding a forward fold. A little bit of a wider stance here, but trying to keep that hinge of the hips. That may mean that your legs don't get all the way to straight. That's okay. Just finding that energy within the back line of the body. So finding that fold, eventually allow your head to hang heavy. And as your head hangs heavy, you feel a little bit more of a lift within the back of the hips. Inhale, halfway lift, come out of it. Exhale, drop the hips into the active squat for just a pause to round and ripple or extend yourself up into an upward salute. As you inhale, arms up overhead. Stretch the body up. Exhale, hands to heart centers. You sit yourself back into that active squat. Find that depth. Inhale, keep that hinge. Send the hips up and back in space. Find that fold. Inhale, find that halfway lift, plant the hands. Step the right foot back, the left foot back, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, bring the left foot outside the left hand. Once it plants, feel free to shimmy forward and back for a breath or so. And keeping that left knee hugged in towards the left arm. Spinning that right inner thigh underneath you to bring that right hip point down. 
left sit bone back. So you're feeling that energetic push and pull to really square things off and churn everything nice and engaged into the center of your body. Everything is nice and active, engaged, turn on. You're driving that right heel back in space. That right thigh is turned on to keep you, that back leg supported to stay lifted. Go ahead and drop that back knee down. Lift the chest and heart just a little bit more. Lift the back knee once more, send the hips back in space, coming to that pyramid pose. And again, with this shift back in space, sometimes that right hip wants to open up, bring it on down. Allowing that right hip point to shine towards the mat as the left hip pulls back in space. Torso is nice and long, spine's nice and long and lifted. Bend into that front knee, a step or two to bring the right foot outside the right hand. Inhale, sit the hips low, active squat, allow those knees to come wide to give yourself some room to sink the hips nice and low. Low belly's engaged, bring that lift all the way up through the chest and the heart. Sit low, keep that hinge, exhale, hands come through heart center, send those hips back. Trying to straighten-ish those legs as you dive forward. Hands come down to the earth, finishing off that fold all the way down. Inhale, halfway lift. Really reaching those sit bones back behind you again like you have a rope or a strap right across your hip creases and someone's pulling it back behind you. That's the kind of energetic pull you want coming from your hips. Exhale, sit the hips low, come back into that active squat. And on your inhale, go ahead and come into Tadasana. Hands can come to heart center. Arms up overhead. Inhaling, stretching the front body open. And then exhale, sit the hips low, come back into that active squat. Inhale, fold. Find that half lift. Exhale all the way down. Inhale, lift the chest, plant the hands. Step the left foot back, the right foot back. Downward facing dog. We're going to go through that one more time each side. So inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale, right foot outside the right hand. Shimmy forward and back for a round or two. And then settle into your shape, hugging that right knee in, pulling that right hip back as the left hip comes forward. Drop the back knee straight down, feel that length within the front of the left hip. Chest lifts high on the fingertips. Lift the back knee, send the hips back in space, coming into pyramid pose, maybe lifting the front toes. Finding a little bit more energy, more activation within that right leg. Still fighting for the squaring of the hips, bringing everything in towards the middle. As the left hip comes forward, right hip comes back. Plant the right foot, bend into that right knee. Left foot outside, left hand. Inhale, active squat. Exhale, find that fold, hinging at the hips. Inhale, squat back down. And then find your way up to Tadasana. Maybe reaching the arms up and overhead, finishing that inhale. Exhale, sit the hips, low active squat. Inhale, dive forward, finding that fold. Exhale, settling into it. Inhale, hands plant, set the right foot back. Left foot back, downward facing dog. 
Inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, left foot outside, left hand. A weight shifter, so working into your space, giving yourself the opportunity to bring that right hip down. Hug that left knee in. Pause and drop the back knee straight down. Feel the length increase within the front of that right hip. Lift the back knee, send the hips back. Pyramid pose. Lift the left toes. Keep that right hip fighting for that more forward roll. So really reaching, pulling that right hip point forward. Maybe lift, lifting underneath yourself with that inner thigh. So you're rolling that right leg down and in. Plant the left foot, right foot outside, right hand. Inhale, active squat, sit low. Exhale, find that hinge, dive forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, sit the hips low. Inhale, all the way up towards that standing position, upwards the loop. Exhale, active squat once more. Inhale, dive forward. Exhale, settle. Inhale, hands plant, left foot back, right foot back, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg lifts, exhale, driving that right knee in towards the chest, bringing that right foot in between the hands. And then pause here for just a moment. We're in a much more narrow stance than we were just prior, so see if we can find that squaring off in the hips once more. So you're bringing that right leg bone, that right hip, almost un straight underneath you as the left hip point comes forward. And once you find a strong, stable base, left heel is, he is heavy, right leg is really engaged, the sole of the right foot is keeping you nice and steady. Inhale, come up, crescent lunge. And as you come up into this shape, see if you can take note of where your hips are in space here in this moment. Maybe it's a little bit easier here with your torso, giving your right thigh a little bit more room. Maybe you're able to feel that push and pull of the hips with a little bit more sensation. Arms reach up overhead. Inhale, reach up tall. Exhale, settle into your shape. Inhale, reaching tall. Exhale, settling. So inhale. On that next inhale, go ahead and reach up nice and tall. And then exhale, let the arms sweep down. Like we were doing earlier in class, we're going to find those hinging, that hinging of the hips. So on the inhale, you're reaching up. On the exhale, you're letting those arms come down alongside your body as you tilt the torso forward. The fingertips are gonna reach back behind you. So you're coming into that almost like an airplane lunge. So you're reaching the fingertips back, allowing the shoulder blades to draw down the back body, tilting that torso back over the right thigh. Inhale, reach up and overhead. Exhale, find that airplane lunge. Keeping that left hip point down. Inhale, lift. Pull the left hip point up and forward. Exhale, down. Pause in here. Really finding that compression over the right hip. Inhale, reach the arms up and overhead. Keeping that hinging of the hips. Bend deeper into that right leg. Come onto the back toes as you shift your weight forward, forward, forward. Transition nice and slow and with control into Crouching Warrior. I know that right leg is tired. Commit to it. Exhale, maybe use your hands to drive that right knee to straight. So those hands are on the, the lower part of your right thigh to help guide you into that space. Keep that left hip point shining down towards the floor. Again, it might want to open up, not yet. Keep it down. So you're keeping that left hip point shining down towards the floor. So that right hip 
You're gonna to wanna to pull that right hip crease back in space. Again, thinking of that strap. Go ahead and rebend that right knee, reach the left toes back behind you. Inhaling back up into crescent lunge. Exhale, sweep the arms down and back behind you. Find that airplane lunge for just a moment. And then go ahead and let the hands plant, come out of that front leg, come into extended pyramid pose. Come back into that right knee, hands plant. Right leg sweeps up and back in space, three-legged dog. And then go ahead and allow that right leg to plant. Switching sides. Inhale, right, left leg lifts. Exhale, drive that left knee forward. Left foot comes between the hands. Find that low lunge. In that more narrow stance. So see how those adjustments within the hips, how they differ. How they might be a little bit more challenging, maybe even a little bit more subtle. We just spent quite a bit of time working through that right leg. So use this as an opportunity to maybe shift forward and back. Working over the back toes, driving back through the heel. Then find your stillness. Strong within the lower body, squared off through the hips. Then inhale, come up, crescent lunge. As you come up, you're lifting that right hip point up with you, lifting through the low belly. Heavy through the back heel, sinking into the hips. Strong and committed to that front knee. Arms reaching up overhead. And again, as you're trying to bring that right hip point forward, think of, so if it's opened up a little bit towards the right side of the room, think of your hands. Again, we're not using this kind of torque by any means, but imagine you had two hands around your thigh and you're spinning that right thigh down and in. So that right hip point can face forward and that left hip can pull back. Inhaling arms, reaching nice and tall in the sky. Exhale, settling in. With every inhale, finding that space and every exhale, Committing to your shape. Inhale nice and deep. Nice, long, steady breath. And exhale, go ahead and sweep those arms down and back behind you. Find that airplane lunge once more, tilting the torso over that front leg. Inhale, come up. Exhale, lower. Finding that hinge. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Really reaching those collarbones, the chest and heart beyond that left knee. Inhale, lift once more. Exhale, fold forward. As you find that airplane position, pause. You're gonna come into that left foot, that left knee a little bit more as you roll onto the back toes, nice and slow, transitioning forward into that crouching warrior. Stay committed to that front leg, I know it's tired. Exhale, press that left knee to straight, keeping that right hip point shining down, really fighting for that stability, for that evenness from the hip, pulling that left hip crease back in space, giving yourself some room to bring that right hip point down, reaching those right toes nice and long. Nice and slow back into that crouching warrior. Reach those right toes back in space. Inhale, crescent lunge. And then exhale, send the hips back in space. Come into extended pyramid pose. Lift the back, lift the front toes, send the hips back. Come back into that left leg. Plant the left foot, hands plant, inhale, left leg lifts, three-legged dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let 
Find your breath here. In our next few rounds, we're gonna move with a little bit more pace, adding on, exploring our stability, challenging our ability to find that squaring of the hips, that stacking of the hips. So we're gonna play a little bit more with the stacking of the hips. So again, just working on our line and paying more attention or bringing more attention to our body in that space. Knowing that it's okay if we kind of find any wiggles, wobbles, instability in these next few flows. Knowing that we're finding any perspective. And that's fun to challenge that in different ways. So on your next inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale, bring that right foot in between the hands, driving that knee towards the collarbones. Find that low lunge. Inhale, crescent lunge. Square the hips, taking enough time to pause and really find that position, that nice, strong and stable base where both sides are working equally together to bring, to make your body nice and supported. Exhale, find that hinge, arms sweep down and back behind you. Find that airplane pose. Reaching the fingertips nice and long, drawing the shoulders away from the ears. Inhale up. Pulling the hip points up and forward, lifting the low belly as you lift, making that connection happen. On the exhale, we're finding that airplane lunge once more. We're transitioning right into our crouching warrior. So shift into that front foot, come onto the back toes. Nice and slow, stay committed to that right knee. As the left leg lifts, find that squaring of the hips. Pull the right hip crease back, left hip down. Exhale, warrior three. Straighten through that right leg. Keep fighting for that positioning as you transition. Reaching the left toes back in space. Bend back into that right leg. Reach the left toes back until you find crescent lunge once more. Exhale, send the hips back, hands or no hands, extended pyramid pose. Almost like you can move like you have airplane, those airplane arms so that you find that hinge as the arms reach back behind you. Hands are in the front foot, bend into that right knee. Find that low lunge. Find the hips. Plant the hands. Bring the right foot back to meet the left. And then go ahead and spin onto the outer blade of the left foot, inner blade of the right foot as you come into Vashistasana, side plank on the left. Here's your opportunity to focus on the hips. I know it's hard when you're on that left arm, when you're working on the core. But see, to peek down at your hips, is your right hip spilling out and open towards the sky? Can you bring that left hip underneath? Can you stack the right hip on top? Maybe find a gentle engage with the glutes to help keep the hips in line with the torso, with the lower body. So that you're fitting between two panes of glass. You can't fit between two panes of glass if your torso is tilted up, if your hips are bumping back behind you. So can we fight for that position for five, for four, three, two, one. Go ahead and come down into high plank, spin onto the toes. Exhale, downward facing dog. Coming onto the next side. Inhale, left leg lifts, exhale. Drive that knee in towards the chest to bring the foot between the hands. Find that low lunge and pause. Once you find your shape, inhale, keep it, keep it, keep it as you come into crescent lunge. Maybe you have to readjust when you get there. That's fine, that's okay. That's part of the process. And then exhale, tilt, that, tilt your body forward. Arms sweep down and back behind you. Find that airplane lunge. Inhale, lift. Maybe sink a little bit lower into your shape. Exhale, find that hinge. Really reaching down with the fingertips. Shift your weight forward once you get there. Come into that left knee. Right toes drag until they're ready to lift. Bring that right hip down. 
Exhale, straighten that left leg to the best of your ability. Even if it doesn't get straight, find a position that's different than your crouching warrior in some capacity. Bring that right hip point down. Come back into Crouching Warrior. Come back through Crouching Warrior. As you reach your right toes back behind you, inhale. Coming into that crescent lunge. And then exhale, hands or no hands, maybe finding that airplane dip of the chest. Coming into Extended Pyramid Pose without assistance as you reach the arms back behind you. Again, wiggle and wobble is okay. Work with it, play with it. Plant the left foot, hands frame the front foot, and then bring the left foot back to meet the right. And then bring the outer blade of the right foot, inner blade of the left foot as you spin out and open. Rashi starts on the right side. Strong through that right arm, lifted through the right hip. Take a peek as your left hip spilling back. Can you fight for it to stack? Belly is engaged. Maybe pressing through the glutes to extend the hips forward. Left arm up towards the sky or up and overhead. We're here for five, four, three, two, one. High plank, downward facing dog. Find your breath one more round, adding on one more pose. I know you're tired, you're working hard. Takes a lot of integration, a lot of mental effort as well as physical to take notes of these various positions, these various cues. So on your next inhale, right leg lifts, exhale. Drive that right knee towards the chest. Foot between, lands between the hands. Pause here. We're familiar, we know where we need to be. Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale. Dive forward, airplane lunge. Belly stays engaged, don't let it droop on that right thigh. Stay intentional. Inhale, lift. Exhale, as you dive forward, transition right into that crouching warrior. Right fingertips reach back behind you. Exhale, straight in the right leg. From here, maybe keep that leg straight, or if you want a soft bend in that knee, we're gonna slowly open up into half moon. A different way of stacking the hips here. Can you spin that right hip open? Can you pull that left hip up and back over top the right hip? You start to spin the chest towards the left side of the room. Again, you can stay on your bottom fingertips, or if you have a block, you can always use that for a little bit more height. Really pressing through that right glute to open up that right hip just a little bit more. Pulling that left hip back in space, engaging that glute a little bit. Here for five, four, three, two, one. Nice and slow. Pull that right hip crease back as the left hip point comes back towards the floor. Finding your crouching warrior, your warrior three. Pausing here for a moment. And then reaching the left toes back in space, inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, send the hips back, hands or no hands, extended pyramid pose. Maybe you don't use your hands until the very end. Right toes lifted or planted, whichever feels better for you. Bend back into that right knee. Plant the hands, right foot leads to the left. Spin onto the blades of the feet as you open up into Vashisthasana on the left side. Stack those hips once more, the same work. If you find that you're able to come into this position with a little bit more ease this time around, can you drive through the outer blade of the left foot? Can you lift the right leg up, hovering over the left? Keeping the hips stacked, keeping those glutes engaged for five, four, three, Two, one, right foot plants, high plank, downward facing dog. Last round, last side. Inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, drive the left foot between the hands. Pause in your lunge, find your shape. Inhale, 
crescent lunge. Exhale, airplane lunge. Inhale, crescent. Exhale, find your crouching warrior right away. Nice and slow shift though. Coming into that left foot, right toes drag and lift. Fingertips reach back behind you. Exhale, warrior three. Keep working towards squaring the hips. I know it's more challenging. I know it takes a little bit more effort. I know you're working on it. Stay in warrior three, or you can come into a more bent knee, whichever feels more comfortable for you in this moment. Left fingertips come down to the earth. Start to spin the left hip open. Right hip stacks on top of left, coming into half moon. And focus on your hips first. See if you're able to stack that right hip on top of the left. And then as you progress through the shape, then maybe you start to spin the chest. Maybe you start to lift that right arm. Glutes are engaged to help really open the hips towards the right side of the room. Torso is lifted, bottom leg is strong. Right leg is reaching back behind you. Here for five, four, three, two, one. Nice and slow. Left hip pulls back. As the right hip comes down, find your warrior for a pause. Stay steady. And then reach the right toes back behind you. Find that crescent lunge. Exhale, send the hips back. Extend your pyramid pose. Breathe into your space. Plant the left foot, plant the hands. Left foot meets the right. Spin open towards the left side of the room. Vashisasana on the right. Find your support, your strength here in this space. Maybe you stay here, maybe you wanna work on the stacking of your hips. Your baseline position is always the most important. But if you feel like you're able to come here with a little bit more ease this time around, strong through the outer blade of the right foot as the left foot stacks and lifts over top of the right leg. Keeping those, the back of the hips engaged. The hips square and stack for five, four, three, two, one. Square everything off, plank pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Drop the knees. Bring the knees wide. Child's pose. Breathing to the hips. Allowing your heart rate to come down. Allowing that energy to surge throughout your body. And go ahead nice and slow, make your way towards the top of the mat, coming into Sphinx Pose. However you need to get there. Keep this position soft at first. Allow your body to arrive. And then within the next few breaths, slowly start to find a little bit more engagement, a little tuck of the tailbone, allowing the hips to come heavy into the earth. Starting to find a gentle lift of the low belly. Gentle press through the forearms, through the elbows. To engage the back body, to lift the heart. Lift the gaze.
and then shifting your weight more into that left forearm. Well, before we get there, go ahead and bring the right heel towards the bottom. Shift your weight over towards that left forearm and try to grab hold of that right ankle. Bringing that right heel towards your bottom, really stretching through the front of that right hip. And feel free to allow the left elbow to come out and rest your forehead on the top of your left hand. So finding a nice stretch here in front of the right hip, but again, with the theme of the class being the hips squaring things off, keep both hip points anchored into the floor as you find space in this shape. come into Sphinx Pose for just a moment if you'd like, or you can stay on your belly, that's fine too. Bring your left heel towards your bottom, shift your weight to that right forearm, grab hold of the left ankle with the left hand, stay lifted, or feel free to rest your forehead on the back of the right hand. Doesn't have to be your biggest stretch. Just a way to find some relief, some opening. Both hip points anchored, scooping the tailbone down towards the earth. Maybe you find more length within the front of the hip in doing so. Stack on top of one another, resting your forehead. And go ahead and bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Come into tabletop and then into the seated position, hips to heels. And from here, we're going to transition into hero's pose if this is accessible for you. There's pit stops along the way to make sure that you remain supported, but bring, a, bring your thighs to touch, knees together, and then go ahead and click the heels out away from one another to give space for your sit bones to rest in between your heels, in between your feet. And this may be just enough for you. Nice stretch within the tops of the thighs, Maybe you have a little bit more space where you can come down onto your forearms. Scooping the tailbone underneath, allowing the chest to open towards the sky. This may be everything you need here today in this moment. Or if you'd like to come all the way down, bring your elbows underneath you, coming onto the backs of the arms, onto the shoulder blades. And maybe this is everything you need. Hands can rest on the chest, on the belly. Or you can grab opposite elbows up and overhead. Really exploring the expansion through the front body. And settling into the space. Again, I know I said no props today, and the focus of today's class did not include any props, but if you would like to explore Hero's Pose, if it's something you do want to still manage to get into, but this seems too excessive for where you're at today, 
You can always grab a bolster, a few pillows to support your torso so that you can remain lifted but a little bit more at ease. Similar to if you were to stay up on your forearms, but again, if you want a little bit more softness, that is always available. If you, have, if you went into the full <clears throat> expression, you can go ahead and unravel your arms. Slowly start to walk the elbows underneath you. Coming up onto forearms. Coming up onto your hands. You bring the hands alongside your body. Go ahead and bring the heels back underneath you. And then go ahead nice and slow, however you'd like to get there. Find your way onto your back. So feet come out in front of you, hook your hands behind your thighs and slowly round all the way down. Bring your heels, walk your heels in towards your bottom and then wiggle the feet out wide, allowing your knees to fall in toward one another. And then arms fall nice and wide alongside your body. If you want to find a little bit of a windshield wiper like back and forth to find you before you settle into this space, please feel free. And eventually we're gonna reach our legs nice and long. Coming into Shavasana, coming into our final rest. Allowing all the joints of the body to fall open, to be open, to receive the energy that you've created, the energy that surrounds you. As always, please remain here in this shape for at least five to 10 more breaths to really allow the body to settle, to fall open, to fall heavy onto the earth, to really feel all the benefits of the activation, the space that you created within your hips here in today's class. As always, thank you so much for coming to practice with me and I look forward to seeing y'all next time. Have an awesome rest of your day.